Quadri mesher might be one of the most insane add-ons you can get for Blender, but unfortunately, if you don't know how to use it very well, it's going to cause a lot of problems where you get mesh errors and other things occurring. Now, it's always going to kind of do that in, in a sense, but there's ways of working things out if you need to. However, if you approach it from a little bit of a different manner, it's actually really easy to use it, and it's a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to play around with some ideas on how you can utilize it. And you can generate things like this super fast. And you can see they're all subdivided. They're all quad meshes. So uh, really quite simple and easy to do this, believe it or not. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the cylinder. And the cylinder here, we want to make sure that when we first create it, we don't use 32 vertices. We want to use 64 or more. 128 is actually better in this case. We're going to shade this auto smooth. Okay. So you're going to want to use auto smooth on everything, basically. What this does is anywhere where it looks sharp, it's actually the same as marking an edge sharp. It's splitting the binormals here to control the shading. And that's what this little option over here does. So default settings, you turn it off, use normal splitting instead. It's looking for that binormal split. Okay, so once we've done that, we go ahead and create another cylinder if we want. We'll pull it up, scale it in, pull it out to the side. It does have a lot of um, edges on it. However, it needs to be shaded auto smooth. Just don't forget to do that, okay? This is going to be kind of an important step because what's going to happen here is this is um, the, the mesh that you usually use in at least when you're doing uh, remeshes or quad remeshes. A lot of times it's not high poly enough. And then what ends up happening is you get a bunch of like little errors and weird stuff happening. So what we want to do is first remesh the base. And that's kind of where a lot of people I think go wrong. Remesh it first. Okay. Now this one here. We can go ahead and we're going to use a uh, radial array with hard ops. I'm going to select it, shift select this, press Q, go to mesh tools, radial array, and hold shift, click. You can see we can do this number, mouse will in and out as well. And that's pretty easy and simple, right? So now we're going to select this, select this, do a Boolean subtraction. Okay, and we have this going on. Shade everything auto smooth, right? Use that normal splitting. Go ahead and click remesh it. All right. At some point, you would need to realize you're probably going to need to increase that quad count as well because it's reduced the resolution of the mesh, maybe. Mm, not really. Not too much anyways. But um, you want to try to work at the highest resolution you're going to need and then work back down, actually, as opposed to working up. So in this case, we're going to set it up a little bit higher. Something like this might work out, but you can see even at 128 vertices for the cylinder, if we were to subdivide this right now, it might look a little bit faceted even. Uh, it doesn't look too bad but it could, so be careful with that, all right? All right, so with that out of the way, we're not gonna subdivide it yet. I'm gonna shade it auto smooth, keep it shaded auto smooth. And we can go ahead and create another cylinder if we want. Push it here into the center. Then we do a big chamfer on it. Okay, you shade it auto smooth here as well. So in a rare case that something does smooth when you don't want it to, just select it, Control E, and mark sharp, okay? Mark the edges sharp that you wanna mark. In this case, it's not doing that, but you ever run in that situation that's what you want to do and so you can take this and then this and boolean union it together all my things on hide for some reason but anyways we're going to do that okay and now we can actually just make sure it's all shaded auto smooth and we can click remesh okay once that boolean union is done it's now all combined together like so we can keep doing this over and over again if we want to do another cylinder and uh, take it out to the side here Scale it down, place it down here. Okay, and we can go ahead and do the radial array. Shift select that and then do the radial array. Okay, do the subtraction. Shade everything auto smooth, including that Boolean cutter that we just uh, forgot to do. And so we do that. Remesh it. And there we go. It looks pretty good. So at a certain point, you'll actually have to increase the quad count because you can see we're only at, what is it, 2,000 faces right now. But basically, it's going to keep going up and up until it hits near 10,000. You're going to have to increase 10,000 even higher. Basically, is what's going to happen most likely. So uh, this is pretty much good to go. You can shade these things smooth and you can subdivide them. Takes no time at all. All of these took about one, two minutes. That's it. All right, even this one. So if you were doing one like that, it's a little bit more involved. Quad sphere, pull it out, subtract it. You have to apply this one. 
Okay. And the reason is because we need to get this edge here. We're going to use mesh machine. We're going to do a Boolean cleanup. You can see what's going on here, right? Make sure it's all good to go. In this case, we didn't actually have to clean it up. Okay. Um, but you may want to do something like the offset cut. It's an experimental feature. So you can work that back a little bit, perhaps, and then control B and do a chamfer. Okay. When we do that chamfer, we want to take these edges and mark them sharp. Shaded auto smooth. We get this result. All right. And so we can also place the 3D cursor, try to line it up with the, uh, the shape here. And we can also do things like uh, maybe like a cube. Scale it down on Z, scale it on Y, scale it on X, maybe move it forward a little. And maybe we take this and scale it on Z. Okay, and so we can actually do a Boolean subtraction from this, but we want to remesh this first. So we're going to crank up that quad count to whatever we need, use normal splitting, and remesh it. Okay, now we can take this and subtract it from that. Okay, we can grab the cutter if we want, go into edit mode. We take these two segments, bevel them. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and pick the base again. Make sure it's all shaded auto smooth, right? And we can remesh it. We can keep working like this pretty much indefinitely. Um, when mesh gets a little bit too complicated, though, it does start to develop a little bit of an issue with um, some of the edges and whatnot. So if you can keep them simpler, it's a better idea to do that, but you don't actually have to necessarily. So you see that works out pretty well. Now also it was kind of low resolution, so the uh, there's a little bit of faceting that's in the middle of it. So do be aware of that. If that ever does occur, you'll take your subdivision away, shade auto smooth, so we get our edges sharp again, right? And you might reduce the resolution. So sometimes you gotta work up, sometimes you gotta work down. You can see here, maybe we'll go a little bit further down. Okay. Until we get something going here about correct. You can play around with these settings and see what you can get going. You can see that worked out pretty well. So that one should subdivide very subdivide very well. We don't have any loops in here, so just add a couple loop cuts back. All right. And so this is just kind of a workflow that I've been working on for a couple of years, just trying to get it mastered or whatever. There's a lot more cool stuff you can do, of course. Um, working in this manner, you'll have to kind of discover them on your own because I haven't refined them perfectly yet. Um, but I might show you in the future. I don't know yet. So we'll find out, though. And uh, when I do, it'll probably, probably be a course, to be honest, because there's a lot involved with it. But um, definitely try it out and then experiment with it. See what you can do. It's a lot of fun. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed.